Hi DIYers, Joe from Alarm Grid, and today we're going to show you how to add a second push button keypad to a Vista 21 IP. Now, this works exactly the same on your Vista 20P, so for either panel, this process will work. Today, we have our 21 IP set up, and we already have a 6150 connected to the system as a working keypad. Now we're going to add in the 6160 as the secondary keypad on this system. But first, we're going to have to power the system down 100% and connect the 6160 via wire to the system's terminals. So I'm going to undo the main power for the system and then unplug the backup battery. Now I have my 6160 wire right here and I have it set up to go into the terminals. It goes terminal 4 is negative power, that's black. Terminal 5 is positive power for 12 volts DC, that's the red. Terminal 6 is for my data, and terminal 7 is for my data. And if we look at our wiring diagram, it'll say terminal 6 is for green, terminal 7 is for yellow. It's just the data going in and out, and it's a way that they have it set up so that it does work when you do connect it to the system. But I'm going to loosen up the terminals on the system. These are the existing things that are connected. And then I'm going to simply slide my wires under each respective terminal. And I've tried to do it in such a way where it makes my life a little easier when I slip the wires in, because I can kind of all push them in around the same time. I'll go ahead and tighten them all down. Just to make sure my connection is nice and secure, a little tug shows that it's not going anywhere. So now I'm going to re-plug in the backup battery and re-plug in the panel. Now before I plug in the panel, I just want to go over a couple important things. One, when you're adding a second keypad to the system, you have to do this next process within 60 seconds of powering the system up. So after we power it up, we're going to go ahead and address the keypad and get it working. On the Vista systems, the 20 and the 21 IP, the keypad addresses go from 16 to 24 for the push button keypads. So you can have eight of these connected to the system. We do have the secondary address set up for our second keypad, which is address number 17. So we'll be able to uh, program this keypad to that address and it's going to work out right. After we do that though, we're going to show you how to enable the address in case the system doesn't have the address enabled. And also, if your system is a Vista 20P with a revision 10.23 or higher, this keypad address is already enabled. So you'll only have to do this next keypad address enabling process if your system is a 20P below that revision level or if it's a lower model system. But now that we have our system wired up, let's go ahead and plug it back in and then set our second keypad to address number 17. So I have my backup battery plugged in. I'm going to plug in my main power. And the system is powering up. So now, I believe right now, we can actually address this keypad. So I'm going to go ahead and press 1 and 3. And we do have the, the address programming. I'm going to enter 0, 0 to clear out the initial entry and then I'm going to enter 1, 7. So it's going to be address 17. Start to confirm. This has an RF module in it. We're not going to go into this right now, but that's what these menus have to do with. I'll just confirm that the receiver is on. The receiver address is 0, 0. That's correct. I'll confirm. We don't want high security. We don't want to disable high security devices. The panel is still going through its boot process. That's what we see on the screen right now. And there we go. So we're on our main menu. The keypad is showing disarmed ready to arm. And it looks like everything is working just fine. If we go to arm the system with our default code 1234 and then 2, we should be able to arm the system from the keypad. 
and it is working. So let me just disarm the system. Great, so our keypad is working. Now let's show you how to enable this keypad address if it wasn't already enabled on your system. So each of these keypad addresses are set to a different programming field in the system. The keypad address that we want to enable, it already is, but assuming that it wasn't, is 17. This would be programming field 190. The keypad addresses go up from there. And if you check your programming guide, you'll see all the instructions for doing this if you wanted to use that as a reference. Once we get into that programming on the system, we'll have to tell the system which partition the keypad is going to live in. And then we also have to tell it if we want to nullify or suppress any of the noises that come from the keypad. We want it to be in partition one. and We also want all the noises to be enabled, which is likely going to be how you program most of your keypads. If you do want to alter any of that or try some of the other options out, check out the fact that's associated with this video as there's going to be information there with all the different options available to you for this process. First, I need to get into keypad programming. Let's do 4112800. So now I need to select keypad address number 17. To do that, I'm going to do star 190. And as you see, we have keypad address 17. From here, based on the next two digits that we enter, we're going to tell it which partition we want it to live in and if we want all of the noises coming from the keypad to be enabled. So to do that, I do want this to work in partition 1. So for the first digit, I'm going to hit 1. And then I do want all of the sounds to be enabled. So to do that, I'm going to hit 0. The three beeps that we just heard, that confirms that our programming edits were successful. And as you see here, it's gone to keypad address number 18. So this will walk you through all the keypad addresses if you do actually want to enable all of them or edit them. If you don't though, after you do your edit, just hit star 99. Back out of programming and we're back to the main menu. If you do have any questions about adding a secondary push button keypad to your Vista system or alarm questions in general, feel free to give us a call at 888-818-7728. Send us an email at support at alarmgrid.com or uh, head to our website at www.alarmgrid.com. If you did like the video, feel free to subscribe. And if you want to be notified when we post future videos, hit the notification button below and we'll send you an update when we do so. Thanks for watching and have a great day.